Mother here from H and P. We're on location at the BFW Post, 8568 in Livingston, Texas. Or I am with Morgan Luttrell, Republican candidate for Texas's eighth congressional district. For those of you not familiar with his history, Mr. Luttrell is a decorated Navy SEAL, where he was a special warfare operator. Following an honorable 14-year military career, Morgan retired from the Navy in 2014 and applied his personal success and experience to help fellow veterans come from PTSD and brain injury sustained in battle. He's a learned individual and has multiple degrees. Um, after earning his executive certificate of professional leadership development from Harvard Business School, Morgan serves as an adjunct professor at Sam Houston State University. He teaches law enforcement leadership and runs a successful small business. But most important, he is the husband of Leslie and the father of Gunnar and Lincoln. As stated on his website, across two wars, healing fellow veterans and leading 21st century technological advances in President Trump's Department of Energy, Morgan has poured every ounce of himself into protecting America and saving as many as he can. He's ready for his next mission, serving as our conservative congressman. Thank you for your service, making it possible for us to be here right now doing what we're doing right now. So never quit is your mantra, never surrender. Yes, ma'am. Good, I wanted to make that clear before we got any deeper into this interview. Some of the questions I'm going to ask will be serious. Mm -hmm. Some might be considered frivolous, some rhetorical, and others just plain comfortable. Okay. So I must ask, can you adapt and overcome as I throw you curves and sliders and the occasional fastball? I will do my absolute best. Well then, the tone is set. Yeah, the <laughs> audience entertained and enthralled. There you go. What is your favorite cigar? I've never smoked anything in my entire life. Wow. We'll have to talk to the cameraman about that. Yeah. All that's right. Not, that's not my thing. My, my parents, I grew up in a household that people smoke. It's not my jam. Good deal. Okay, so you're applying for the job of being my advocate representing me in Congress. Mm -hmm. What do you like best about Morgan Luttrell? What is his best quality? What is mine? Integrity, character, humility, tact, pride, a lot of things to like. Humbleness. <laughs> awesome. Um, we got back at right a lot more, a couple more characteristics if you wanted to, but we can start with those. That works. Thank you. Um, so I looked over your priorities on morganlatrell.com website. And that was a lot of hot button issues there. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm not being critical, I'm just saying it looks like a standard conservative Republican platform. So tell us why you and not the Democrat or the Libertarian? Why me? Hometown boy. Grew up here in this district. I'm a Willis Wildcat and Sam Houston Bearcat. After my worldly travels, I came back home and to ask myself, ask you, ask the question, why me? Is I think I properly represent the base and the district as a whole. I think I speak that language. Uh, being cultured, having traveled world Washington D.C., I think I have the ability to navigate not only those difficult waters and play that chess game up there. Would come back home and, and talk to you or talk to the people, people in Willis or Conroe or Waverly or Cyprus. And communication is the key to a representative. And given my background, I think I already know why. I'll speak confidently on this one and I'll be a little bit aggressive on this. I know that I'm the best candidate to do that yes. in 2022. Yes. Awesome. Is that glass? Half empty or half full? Half full. It's always got to be half full. If your glass is half empty, kind of gap, girl or gal, it just it seems like it's a deadly downhill spiral that you can never come out of. Okay. It appears to me that we have twice as much glass as we need. Could not have maybe that outlook help just about anyone in office to curtail the wasteful spending. <laughs> I would absolutely agree with you on that, Mother, that the, the frivolous excessive spending of this administration. I'm a small business owner. 
and if my business is not in black, if I was to do what they were doing and just you know, let's put a post data check on it for mm -hmm. 10 years, yes, I don't think they would put me under the prison, definitely take everything I had away from me. So, I understand the analogy wholeheartedly. Well, feel free to use that once you're in Congress when the peers get a little skin happy, okay? Okay. Okay. So, um, little money question. The U.S. is now 30 trillion in debt. Uh, I think we bumped up about 10 uh, million since you and I were sitting here together. Probably, probably. Um, how do you see your children, grandchildren paying that debt? That, that can't be done. I, I'm not, I think it's a multi-generational -generation, issue, but I think the best way to do that is, in my opinion, the fastest avenue or approach angle in order to curtail the spending and balance that budget is a balanced budget amendment. I'm a big advocate of that. Now, will that happen in, a, in, in, in Congress? In my lifetime? No, yeah, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think the, the Congress as a whole, you know, maybe I'm being a little bit pessimistic here and I'm, I'm truly an optimist. Uh, just kind of plan for the worst and hope for the best. You know, maybe one day with a, a completely red or maybe red and blue, you just never know if we could have a balanced budget amendment passed and put that in the Constitution. That'd be great. I think a convention of the states would probably be faster. Yeah. You know, we could do that and maybe we could do term limits as well because I don't think Congress, I'm a term limits guy. Um, you know, everybody's like, don't say you're a term limits guy. I'm a term limits guy. You heard it right here. You play hey. this back in a few years. You Exclusive. Um, I think that's the, the fastest way to. To, to fix that issue is a balanced budget amendment. You know, to, and then once we do that, it's, 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 it's bringing back industry tech, it's bringing back our independence as far as energy, technology, and medicine, making America, you know, the, the, a grand export and just start compounding the, those payments on top of that. And I think that'll definitely bring it down. You're gonna have to have an administration, a house and a Senate that wants to do that. Um, I want to do that. Now there's 435 of me. 434, including me here come November, you know. Um, definitely a, a fight worth having. Um, I've talked to economists on both sides of the aisle, and you know, I'm, I'm by no means an economist, an accountant, a finance expert by any stretch of the imagination. Most brilliant men and women in that space have been working in DC for decades, and here's where we are. Yes. <laughs> so I think as just a small business owner that has the idea idea and ideologies of man we you know i want to do it the way that makes my as you said children grandchildren great grandchildren give them something i mean i don't want to pass this off to them no um, it's unfortunate yes it is and even eighty-seven thousand new irs agents can't find that kind of money so i don't know about that <laughs> 87, 000, yeah yeah <laughs> all right so something else for you more than 54 million americans are age 65 and older and 26% of them are working in the private sector, dodging potentially deadly viruses while trying to keep their families fed, electricity on, and their property taxes paid. Um, so we're feeling the economic squeeze every day, and when many of us get to go to, to the grocery store and have to decide between the utility bill and buying groceries, um, that's a lot of stress on people who have worked their entire lives to be able to breathe easier in the last years. How do you see this being resolved or will it? Um, I think so. I think there's always an ebb and flow. It, unfortunately, it is out to the right, you know, far right flank or left flank, whichever, you know, I think it, it's that pendulum swung so far in excess. Yeah. And I think that's got a lot to do with just the polarization of the parties and how they have to outdo each other. But we, the American people down here, and, you know, these small counties, we, we feel that yes. more so than everybody else. I think once and moving into this the 22 election or the 24 election now that's just something that you can't undo in a matter of a year or two oh. the damage has been it's done right. it's in place so that momentum shift it, that train's going to take a while to slow and back back down that track and the way that obviously the way to do that is to put an administration or elected officials in place that understand you know excessive spending just on a whimsical and that, that balance and that synergy that needs to take place between inflation and the markets and what that looks like as far as supply and demand goes, it, it'll take us as a whole. And that, this is my, you know, my, my hope when I get there is, hey look, hey look, all right man, seriously, I'm coming from a place where I'm a country boy just like you, I gotta go to the grocery, 
I don't get eggs and stuff, but we have that at the farm. But yeah. you know, you, you understand what I'm talking about. I drive a yes. diesel truck. It's three hundred dollars to fill my truck up. Diesel's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So like, hey, look, I'm speaking from a place of you know experience here, where you're like, I'm dying. You know, my, my family and friends where I live are dying here. We just seriously, you're just killing us. Let's let's quit the the ugly rhetoric. You know, right? You're Democrat. You're I'm Republican. We don't have to hate. You know, we mm -hmm. we can get behind closed doors and hate each other. But when it's time to really make this country sustainable and livable, let's 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 do just that. Let's let's stop the spinning and find that inflation sweet spot. You know, let's let's of course correct the supply and demand issue. Let's X increase please. our export. You know what I mean? Yes, please, please, yeah. Yes, please. Um, some personal stuff now. Tell me something about your time in the seals that you've never told any interviewer that's not in any book or any video, something new never before discussed or shared in the media. Just just give me an exclusive. Just make this old woman happy. <laughs> After my first gunfight where I literally thought I was gonna lose my life. And I won. It was just it was me and him. After my first gunfight where I came out on top. I've never, ever once again cared what direction my socks were when I put them on. <sighs> it just seems so menial. Wow. It's funny because the next day when I was putting my boots on, putting my socks on, they were wrong side out. And I was like, I just don't care anymore. I mean, I literally almost died yesterday. Yeah. And I had to take someone's life. Who cares which way? And I just been up, and that, that's, that's silly, right? That is, but every, you know what, you know what, you know what, you know what? This is the guy's not true that I've told anybody this ever. Um, every time I put my socks on, I think about that gun Wow. Man. Half, half in 2004. That's important. Yeah. That crazy? <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't care what way that's, my socks are. Yeah. Unless I'm in, you know, dress shoes where people see them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've actually, I've actually forgotten about it. You know, people are like, hey, your socks are on side out. And I guess when you represent in the district of 700,000 people, you got to, you know, part, right? <laughs> We'll Thank see. You. We'll see what happens. Thank you, Morgan. Now, being as you live in Magnolia, when is the last time you attended the Texas Renaissance Festival, and what is your favorite part of it? <sighs> well, here it comes. I you, no, I'm, so we live right there. Okay. Um, we feel the traffic pressures. Thank yes. God, our great commissioner Charlie Riley fixed that, put the bridge in, it got us. And uh, I haven't been, I haven't been to Renaissance Festival since I was sixteen. Wow. I have not. My boys are just of the age where it's time to introduce them. Yeah, turkey legs. And yeah. my, my all time favorite back then was the mud show. Yes. The guy with, with had the mud pit right by the stone. Yeah. Man, he just, I thought that was good in the belly answers. So we had the free kiss card. Yeah. For many man, <laughs> yeah. woman, or beast, right? Yeah. And my brothers and buddies and I would, would run around and um, chase the belly answers down when we were. 16 years old. Well, it's time for Gunner and Lincoln to get out. Yeah, there. no, no, we're excited about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How strong do you like your coffee? Okay, so I never drank coffee in in college or in the Navy. Oh. Ever. Wow. Not my thing. I just, I, I never was a coffee drinker. And my wife, after, once we were married and lived together, she's a coffee drinker. And every morning and when we get up, she usually wakes up before me and she's reading scripture. And when I, when I come out after my, I got to get in the shower and warm, warm the body up. My, my, my back is just, yeah, it's a thing. So I walk out and she's got a cup of coffee. And um, so I'm, I, I, have, I have a little bit of uh, creamer in my coffee. Um, I'm not that sludge black. Oh. I, never, I never made it there. And everybody I worked with in the SEAL teams, man, they would drink. They just look like slop coming out of it. Yep. God. I want mine to show up in a drug test. I mean, that's how yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I, I, I'm, I I'm kind of a rookie. I've been drinking coffee just right ten years now. Um, and but you know, it's funny thing because it kind of seems like I'm. I, just, I can't. It's either where I don't like it with the cream as much, and I like it stronger. And yeah, I get that way. So I'm. I'm sure here in the next couple of years or so, it might. It's less Yeah, Leslie like like drinks hers slick. Just grab it. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to do an A or B part of the interview now. Okay. Okay, so pick one. You know it's this or that. So, boxing or MMA? Choose MMA. All right. Football or soccer? Football. American. 
Mopar or import? Mopar all day. Hamburgers or hot dogs? Is this the in the house or out of the house thing? Oh, uh, hamburgers. Basketball or baseball? Baseball. Nine millimeter or 45 ACP? Uh, both. Actually. Situational. You mean which one I have on me? Stay or be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's oddly enough, because I buy a new weapon system probably twice a year, and because I'm constantly looking for the one that fits not only my hand, that I like the geometry, but what I have to wear. Like when I wear a suit, depending on the suit I have to wear, if I don't have a belt on, mm -hmm. I have to wear shoulder holster. Right. Now, I like to draw, I'm left handed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the 1911s for me are kind of, it's like a man gun. So, I, I wear that with my blue jeans. You know, when I have a suit on, I usually wear a 380. Um, I have a suit on right now, so I have a 9 millimeter. Right. But it's kind of, it's, a, it's not a subcompact per se. Uh, so, I'm going to say both. Okay. Very applicable. Yes. Again, situational dependent. Yes. Where am I going? Yes. Because uh, magazine count counts. Yes, it does. <laughs> and with those nineteen elevens, you know, you can't stack those mags as well as you can the the nine millimeters. So I like to have fifteen rounds because you got to go hot, you go a lot, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Big business. Air guitar or air drums? Oh, air guitar. Awesome. Air guitar. Yeah. All right. So um, let's see. Ah, not at my house or all day long. Okay. Okay. Barbecue with vegan options. Not at my house. Training wheels. Not at my house. Socialism. Not at my house. Let's go brand. I feel like I should say not in my country. Ah, there you go. Okay. No, not in my house. This okay. is not in my house. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's go brand. Uh, all day long. All day long. Say it for me. All day long. Let's go, Brandon. Look at that. I tell you what, I, I, <laughs> I, it took me forever. Um, I was kind of behind the curve a little bit. I, I wait for the news and the media to come out and do their thing, and I let it ramp up, kind of right now. Yeah. And uh, watching the NASCAR piece when that Rissy came out. Yeah. Oh, man. I just, what, how unfortunate. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The Gonzalez flag. Oh, all day long. Defund the police? Not in my house. The wall? All day long. Gun control? All, uh, gun control? Gun control. Oh, yeah, not in my house. Made in the USA? All day long. Uncle Joe, I did that sticker, you know, like they put on the gas pumps. Have you seen that? There's a picture of Uncle Joe and he's pointing. I did that at the price of gas. No, huh? It's a sticker. Okay. Yeah. No, I haven't seen those. Okay. All right. That made it out of Magnolia yet. No, not out of Oak County. Nope. Okay. So, we're going to get just a little bit into politics. Oh, imagine that. Our current president's behavior makes me ask this question. Okay. Should politicians provide impartially obtained medical reviews of their health to their constituency or keep it private? I know you're still in the public office, so you and I'm a brain science guy. Yes. So I'm I'm a big advocate of you know, your cognitive ability, especially at that level, at the highest level, at any level really, government. If you're a decision maker, um, your your cognitive assessments. Now, whether or not it needs to be in detailed, you know, hey, look, right. everything you got going on, that's a HIPAA thing. I, your privacy is your privacy. I'm yes. a Fourth Amendment guy all day long. I think there should be a a. a um, I think there should be a, no, maybe not, just give me, give me a little rope here, not a committee, but you know, a, a, a consortium of, of doctors and, and licensed professionals that are in the health, that are in the neuroscience, neurology, cognitive issue space, physical and cognitive, you know, let's don't take, let's, let's do both. I mean, you just have to have the ability to sit that seat. You sure. Have have. And um, especially, you know, the president, he need, that needs to be made public to the, to the American people. We need to know. I mean, yeah. Hey, look, are you making these decisions because you're trying to be impaired or are you making these decisions because you you completely come off the rails, right? Yes. Um, 
but to drive that point home, um, I'm a big privacy guy. You know, I don't. You said eighty-seven thousand IRS agents might go there. Here we go, man. So, yeah, it's, it's going not crazy. Yeah. Well, you do know that going to Washington, doing the same stuff on a different day, you know, it's just an ESSDD. What would you do differently? Change the dynamic in DC. I'm a United Front guy. That's something I learned in the military. And people all they often can, they can give us a little dose of your leadership style. And um, mine, and I took a lot of tools from the leadership that I have above and below me as I've grown in life and put that in my toolbox. Uh, one of the most important ones is a united front. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, hey, we as Republicans, we got to go behind closed doors, we got to hash things out. And then we're like, okay, hey, look. When we present ourselves to our base, we're united. Democrats do that very well. Um, I think one of the main issues that we see and why the polarization of the parties and the divisiveness of the country is because of what, why this, you got Republicans killing Republicans and you got Democrats killing it's Republicans. Just Republicans. Going. It's just like, yeah. hey man, leaders are not supposed to do, in Morgan's opinion, leaders shouldn't be doing that. Right. So, hey, look, let's, 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 Calmly, humbly articulate the points to the mountain. Not go tell, hey, don't run, run chase them down in the bathroom and, and go hunt them down at their house. You know, yeah. you should be doing it. Mm -hmm. Because people, unfortunately, I'm a big faith based guy, right? Yes. You know, I, I love prayer. But social media, media as a whole, lies. It seems as if people gravitate to their congressional leadership and their sense of the or the administrations, give whichever one it is, that whatever they say do, they do. it becomes their deity. Yes. You know, and that's unfortunate. Yes. You know, you, you, know, you know, have faith. You have faith. Put your faith in, and have the Lord and peace in your heart. I and mean, I think we as leaders can help by doing that. That's how I plan on one way. One thing um, is just I say this all the time. If nobody's shooting at you. <laughs> Just chill out. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal, man. Let's yeah. figure this out. You don't need to yell and scream. They should never have really resolved any conflict that way. And that's me. That's one. That's what we want. If our government ever outlaws guns or firearms ownership, will you embrace your inner felon or have a strong heart to heart with it? Inner <laughs> felon? <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Um, I will always defend the Second Amendment, right? And, I, you know, I can see, uh, speculation, right? Yes. If, if it, if, I'm not going to say one way or another what, what, what I would do. If they, I just don't ever see that happening. Right. And I think if you have veterans, first responders, I think if you have people that live and die by the gun, and I don't have a better way to say it, you know, that's that was my profession. Yes. Law enforcement officers, they put their lives on the line every single day. They have to have that weapon system. Yeah. Um, people that are walking down the street, they, 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 you know, they have to have the opportunity to defend themselves if somebody has that. You know, I, I don't ever see that coming, but I, I put it this way, I'd go to my grave fighting for it to never lose the right to have a weapon. Okay. Excellent. You do know that when a man is denied the right to live the life he believes in, he has no choice to become an outlaw. That was Nelson Mandela. So here's the phone blank part of the interview. Okay. You ready? Yep. Well, these can be dangerous. Most okay. of the politicians will make attempts to weasel out of them, but right. no dodging, no weaseling. You don't want to be that guy. Yep. Okay. I'm going to tee them up for you. All, right. All you have to do is swing. Donald Trump is a blank American. Is it one word only? Mm -hmm. It's up to you. Extremely proud. There you go. Joe Biden is a blank American. Stay. Joe Biden is a blank American. He is a blank American. No, I got one in my head. I want to make sure I say it's right.
Joe Biden is an American that should retire. Okay. Inflation blank. Sucks. That was my <laughs> word. Okay. I don't know how to that's, that's, that's what else. That kind of best trick to say. Yeah, out of control. Okay. Pelosi, Schumer, Schiff, Nader. Need to retire. There you go. All right. Mother of high knowledge preparedness. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the man. All right. This is the Texas is the center of all of it all. Okay. okay, with that, I want to be dead serious here for a moment, okay? Okay. Now, some of these YouTubers may not know that there is war going on here in Texas. It's being fought just a few hundred miles south of here. Guns, gangs, human traffickers, drugs, all sorts of evil is in the mix. Over 700,000 migrants from all over the world across the Texas borders this fiscal year, putting even more strain on our systems and draining our resources. And there's no cavalry coming from D.C. to our rescue. Your thoughts? Interesting. That's something I'm very passionate about, especially our proximity to the border. Yeah. We're, we're seeing and feeling that pressure and that over, it was good to bleed down there. And I think the politicians, I find it kind of comical, the D.C. mayor and the New York mayor yes. talking about, hey, we're being overwhelmed here. Just don't have any oh, idea oh, what's oh. going on. But, you know, you don't really, you kind of don't really how to respond to that. You throw a bullshit flag yeah, right. what you do. Golly. I think there's ways that we can, and hopefully once we take the House back, and, you know, I'm optimistic about the Senate, but I don't think it's actually going to, you know, you know, it's one of those things we're keeping our fingers crossed for. Uh, in order to do that, you have to be able, uh, first and foremost, once we take that back, be able to curtail the spending and, and redirect appropriations in order to say, hey, look, you know, this is what we need to do. Yeah. Showing, continuing to show not only D.C., but the rest of the country, the effects that we're feeling. I'm glad they're talking about that in D.C. It's like, hey, we got a thousand people here. We don't know what to do. Well, we get thousands. We get two, two, three thousand <laughs> a day in one town. Yes, one town. You know, we've been down to Del Rio, Eagles Pass, mm -hmm. um, Racketville. And talking to the leadership down there and talking to the, repre the representatives that represent that district. I mean, it's just such an overwhelming pressure. Can you imagine if 5,000 people a day came to Livingston? No. I mean, just think that like, people don't appreciate what that does just to the infrastructure. Yeah. The grocery stores, the, the hospitals, the, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. It's just overwhelming them down there. It's, just, it's, it's sad. That's what's top priority when I get to D.C. is first and foremost, find out what's going on. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do as a candidate, excuse me, you know, but actually being up there, it's yeah. like literally walking yeah. in and like, hey, seriously, tell me what's going on. Yeah. Re requesting that mayor could come to, you're going to see me. You're going to tell me why, so I can tell my state why you're doing this. Yeah. I, I don't understand. I mean, the vice president's been put in charge of our border and our border security. You, can, you, you continue to hear them talk about, yeah, the border is secure. Well, maybe we should find out what the definition of secure means yeah. and how they're defining what secure, secure yes. means. Yeah. I mean, we, we found enough fentanyl in the last the last month to kill every human being in America. Yes. Right? And our border agents do an amazing job. Our border agents, our, our, our National Guard, and our state troopers. I mean, down there in the border, the state troopers are sort of the lifeline. So there, there are ways, I think there, 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 there's a ways and means in, that we can utilize once we have the ability. I mean, they just, we don't have the House Senate or the White House, so they're literally just handcuffed up there. That's what they literally do. That's We're, it. We can't do nothing. can't do anything. Um, and I'm hoping that that's going to completely change. I, I've talked to a lot of members in Washington, D.C., including the leadership and their priorities. Um, hey, what are your priorities? You need to tell me what's the priorities when we take the house back. What are we doing? We're not big. We're not arguing. We're going forward. We're gonna. We got an agenda. And they thought, yes, we do. And they will lay it out and put orders right up there on top. Which is a good thing. Yeah. That is a good thing. Yeah. yeah. I, we saw the buses. I think people don't realize what what's happening down there. They put them on those buses. They don't have to go all the way to D.C. They can get off San Antonio. They can get off anywhere. Yeah. Right. Uh, they take them. They take them into the airport, San Antonio. They, we as Texans pay their plane ticket to go somewhere in the United States or they take them to the Air Force Base and they fly them out or you know if the ranchers they got to fix their fences they pay yeah. for it the body if they find a body on the yeah. on their property they got to take care of it if they're because of the fence damages animals get out on the road somebody hit they're responsible 
It's just this craziness in the cycle of like, come on, man, seriously. Yeah. That's craziness. Yep. Mr. Luttrell, mm -hmm. mother, my deepest desire is I want to send a badass to Congress. I don't want a politician. I want someone who's looked evil in the eye and done something about it. Now, you've fought in two wars for us, and we're asking you to get right in the middle of what could be your third. <laughs> so, I'm now going to ask you for you to deploy one more time. Yes, ma'am. Good. I'll send word to those shitbirds up on Capitol Hill to put on some background music. Because we're going to send Morgan Latrell to Congress. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Well, we're close to the end of the interview, but I've got a few small items I found on Amazon that I want to gift you. Okay. I want you to take them. Well, due to the vast amount of bull that's running rampant on the hill, um, you're going to need these, I think. You know, we had to hear this, uh, I, say, I can say bullshit on YouTube, but right? BS button. Okay, and then we have the... BS flags, and I really think you're gonna need a lot of these, you know, when y'all start meeting and hearing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, will these gifts get left in the back seat of your car, or will I see them in the future picture of your congressional event? <laughs> <laughs> Let me win the election November 8th. We'll go from there. There you go. So, um, just a couple of little things. Can you tell me? Because he's pointing out time briefly, but give me as much as you can about Team Never Quit. Oh, it's just an advocacy platform to highlight and showcase people with extraordinary stories that have been through anything and everything that you could possibly imagine and have come out a, a, a different person, a better person, and they learn so much from it that they thrive on their experiences of adversity. And we like to we like to have them on the show just so we can share that with people who, who may be you know, having a bad day, may be in a depressive state, may be, you know, lost their job, lost a family member. They're somewhere where they've never been before. And maybe one of these stories will resonate with them. And you hear, you know, the, the beginning, middle, and end of this particular person's story, and you're like, and you know. That sounds horrible. Maybe I don't have it as bad. Yeah. It's just, it, you know, it's very uplifting. And we try to, we just try to help as many people as we possibly can by sharing those stories of just great, great human beings. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, in closing, I would like to say thank you for taking the time to talk with me and answer my questions. Um, it's truly been a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Um, the last minutes are yours. You want to touch on something that I haven't, or there's something you think the voters might need to know about you, or or your candidates. I had uh, I had, <laughs> I had the opportunity to talk. Uh, I was in downtown Houston, and they were doing a press conference over the consulate, China consulate in Houston, uh -huh. and I was actually standing there with some other members and some other candidates and. They introduced the other candidate myself, and they're like, if you'd like to share a few words with with the press and with the, with the audience, you're more than welcome to. And I, I looked over at the other guy, I was like, I got this. And I walked up to the microphone, looked him in the camera, and I was like, I'm done talking. I'll see you in January. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, okay, now we're going to hold on. Okay. All right, so um, you're awesome. If you need a press secretary in the future, you know where to find me. I'm looking. You have to make a promise to me, though. What's that? When you run for Senate or the White House, I get the interview. <laughs> okay. All righty. Oh, let me get here first. Thank you, dear. Yes, ma'am. Thank awesome. you. Awesome.